Welcome back to part 2 and we're going to start putting the whole animation together. So I'm going to duplicate my group which I've called W and I'm going to call it E which is my second letter and all we need to do is take that group go to frame 150 and type shift square bracket and now we've got that group starting at 150 and we need simply to change the motion path for the blurry sparks in this case to the E and I can do that from this motion path shape source menu and now I've got my particles following the first letter particles following the second letter and we just need to repeat that with all the letters so I could have uh, made you sit here and watch me do that but um, instead I've uh, jumped ahead and done it um, I want a kind of fiery effect inside those letters and in order to do that I'm going to come to my letters make a new group just above them uh, command shift N come to my library generators and select my favorite clouds generator and add it to the group and I'm going to come to the inspector and uh, the gradient I'm going to use um, a gradient that I've made called fire and you can see what that looks like there you go you can see that I've used those fiery looking colors at various points okay I want to reduce the speed down to 0.2 so it just gently flickers and then I want to take the clouds add an image mask and the image mask is going to be that entire letters group which I'm going to drag in like that we also need to make sure that this lighting is not inherited either because we really want that to burn through um, and having applied that obviously you need to turn that group back on again because it automatically turns itself off there we go uh, and now I'm going to do two things to the cloud layer well several things I'm going to come to the group turn the shading off come to the library and I want to blur the mask so I mean, you can use Gaussian blur and apply it actually to that mask itself come to the inspector set the amount to 30 and I'm going to reduce the vertical to 15 so we get a more sort of streaky effect which I think is looks a bit more photographic and then we're going to copy that blur to the clouds themselves just to soften them up a little bit and reduce the amount down to 10 and increase the vertical back up again so now We've got a nice burning inside and in order to really make that burn I'm going to set the blend mode to add there we go that's looking good um, you'll notice that there are some holes in the where this has been cut out that's because I've kept the number of um, particles in the letters down in, in order to keep this tutorial uh, at a reasonable pace um, if you really want to get them looking nice and filled in you can reduce the spacing you see how that's changed the W reduce the spacing down to about 8 or something just just to fill it in you, you obviously get a performance hit since all of those individual airbrush points are actually particles uh, obviously the, the, the tighter the spacing the more particles you're, you're generating and that slows things down just a few more things just to, to smarten it up uh, we're going to add a glow to that letters layer like so and zoom in and I'm going to set the radius to 40 the opacity to 0.5 and the threshold to 0.3 and now you can see that's starting to glow quite nicely and finally I want to add some lights that follow along with the sparks uh, and that really makes a nice effect so I'm going to duplicate that light onto its properties parameter avia link I'm going to link it to the W group blurry sparks which if you remember is carrying the animation uh, and I can't actually see that and the reason I can't see that is because it's now uh, flat against the background so I'm going to have to slightly cheat this um, and move the background back 25 pixels uh, and I'm going to increase the intensity of the light to 
500 and now you can see that it's moving with the sparks and that's that's really helps to sell the effect I'm just going to slightly change the color of that um, to make it a little bit more yellow just reduce the blue a bit and I'm going to adjust also the fall off so 115 fall off start and 15 fall off just so it's a little bit tighter like so and obviously I've moved the, moving the background back it's a bit of a cheat because obviously that ought to be cut out of the background but since we're not actually going to be moving the camera uh, you're not going to see any parallax so I'm not worried about that so I'm going to just duplicate those lights uh, and link them to each of the characters uh, so duplicate uh, and then simply change the uh, the destination so that's E blurry sparks each time it's going to be blurry sparks and then behaviors uh, we want the L L group blurry sparks and duplicate again and the D1 group blurry sparks duplicate again is D2 blurry sparks and they're all following along and all we need to do is actually come to each group in turn and make sure it only starts uh, when the cutter gets to that group so um, the second one I'm going to chop at 150 uh, third one I'm going to chop at 300 this is just by pressing I and fourth one I'm going to chop at 450 and the last one I'm going to chop at 600 so there you go that's the scene pretty much finished I hope this has been an interesting tutorial it's certainly been a great deal of fun putting it together uh, thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you next time